Many banks have been rescued recently, but safety nets cost money. We demonstrate in the paper with empirical evidence that increasing the expectation of bankers to be saved by 1% leads to significantly more risk taking on the order of 2.8 percentage points. On average, 8% um, of all German banks between 95 and 2006 are in distress. So an increase of risk by 2.8% is substantial. The challenge in any empirical test of this moral hazard hypothesis is a so-called identification problem. We need to find factors that explain bankers' expectation of being rescued very well, but have nothing to do with risk-taking. And what we do in the paper is we basically show that regional political factors have exactly this, this characteristic. So we, we see that it matters a great deal how powerful a party is in the, in the region, whether there is an election or and whether state and federal ministers share a party to explain those bailout expectations. Now, having then estimated these bailout expectations properly, we show in the second stage that the higher this expectation is, the more risk the bank is taking. And importantly, we show that it is not only, for instance, size that is explaining the risk taking, but size has an additional effect through increasing the expectation to be rescued. I'm big, I expect to be rescued if things go wrong. And this in turn will then lead to additional risk taking on top of big banks just taking more risk. So this paper therefore shows empirical evidence that this moral hazard is a, is a real problem. This real problem has of course also important policy implications because what we see these days is that we have a great deal of rescue schemes in place and the usual narrative uh, is that we believe the, the cost to society of a bank failing causing maybe a systemic meltdown are higher than the cost of rescuing that institute. That might or might not be true. All we are saying and contributing with this paper is that at least we need to add the cost of additional risk taking due to moral hazard in this cost benefit analysis. Um, trying to thinking of solutions rather than problems, we also looked at the scope for prudential supervisors disciplining managers and or banks, I should say. And what we're going to see, what we, what we show is basically that sturdy prudential intervention, firing a manager uh, or prohibiting the distribution of profits, for instance, can reduce the moral hazard effect. So we can rescue banks if we also have sturdy regulatory intervention. However, we also show that weak or piecemeal type of intervention, writing a letter, walking into the bank repeatedly during the year, has adverse effects. It, might, it actually increases moral hazards if I'm signaling to the bank by walking into it very often, hey, you are important. The bank might think, hey, I'm important enough to be rescued, in fact. So there is moral hazard. It is economically substantial. We can mitigate it by prudential supervision. However, we have to be sturdy in our choice of instruments.